bless each and every room that's in our hearts tonight, in our life. And God, we just praise and we worship your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you remain standing, let's grab a hymnal and turn to page 208 and sing that song, Nothing But the Blood. Page 208. Of sin, 
God, we just pray tonight that you would meet every blessing and every need that is in your house tonight. Let's give the Lord a clap offering tonight. God, we thank you for every aspect of our life. We thank you for the power to break free. We thank you for the freedom of sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't Jesus good? He's got everything in control. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. We are back in the house tonight for round two on Sundays. Amen. It was a blessing to be in service. God really blessed and really moved. But it's also a blessing to be here on service on Sunday night. Because sometimes, and we're not looking at it in a negative way, but sometimes it's a long time from Sunday night to Tuesday night. So we need the blessings from tonight to be able to go out on a Monday night and just live for the Lord. Amen. But it is truly good to be here. and, and and you know, well, sometimes when we have new people come, but we're not, we say, hey, you're only a visitor to one time, and after that, you're just family, right? Amen. But I am really, a truly appreciated to see Sister Keisha here tonight. Amen. It is a blessing, Amen. sister, to have you in. The, I know you're not new, but it's a blessing to have you in the house of the Lord. It's a blessing to be here. And like what we were talking about this morning, we'll just sum it up in a little bit. We're all family. That's right. Uh, that's We're right. all family. And what have we said before? The family that prays together stays together. And I'm telling you what, we said it before, we'll probably say it again, but just looking forward to being in heaven with each and every one of you and just be, getting a chance to be able to fellowship. And we talked about before about, about going over to Moses. And, and you know how sometimes you just like being a jokester, maybe giving him a rib shot and say, hey, what's up with that Red Sea? <laughs> But just being able to be in heaven with each other and all the blessings that we're going to be able to share with one another. We're just truly thankful for each and every one of us that's in the house of the Lord. And because without you, this church wouldn't exist. So we greatly appreciate it. And, and you know, we were driving. We, we, we live a, kind of a long ways away. We live down by Janesville. So sometimes we have a long time to think. It's 43 minutes one way to church. And we're not complaining or anything like that, but sometimes you're thinking about God, you're thinking about the church, you're thinking about what God wants in our lives, and we're thinking about what we're going to sing and what we're going to say. And we have 43 minutes to do that, and it's actually quite a blessing. <laughs> I remember we were in Baltimore one time for a fellowship meeting, and we were coming to Baltimore, and I knew at that point that I was already leading song service. So when we got up there, God was already dealing with my heart about those things. And when Reverend Jones came up to me, I already knew. Because God was already moving. Amen. But we were, th we were driving up here, and we were thinking about Sister Walls. Amen. And how much of Sister Walls has been a blessing. Hallelujah. Do you realize a lot of times in some aspects that when your birthday comes around, sometimes you get a personal card that's handmade yeah. and homemade. And we really appreciate those types of things because that's a labor of love. Yeah, right, that's right. And sometimes we need to stop and see what the world says is smell the roses. Yes. What's going on in the background and the time and the effort that it takes to do those types of things. Yeah. And Sister Wells, we really love you. Yeah, right. And we really, care, we really appreciate all those things. Yeah, right. And we're really grateful. Yeah. Along with Pastor, we really love Pastor. Amen. And we really love Pastor. Yeah, that's right. And I really, in a lot of aspects, have nothing but good to say about Pastor Walls and Sister Walls. Right. And they're just really good people. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Right. Well, we want to be mindful of the service coming up on Bible study on Tuesday. And we're, uh, we're back in the book of Hebrews. So be mindful. Bible study Tuesday at 630. The book of Hebrews. And we're back to our regular schedule. Remember, we didn't have uh, church on Thursday. But we're back to our regular schedule. So church Thursday at 6.30. Yes. Saturday prayer meeting at 12. Yes. Amen. And what's happening Sunday mornings? What's happening Sunday mornings? Sunday morning morning service. service. Morning service. What time? 11. Hey, Y'all listen. Y'all listen. This is good. Amen. And then service 6.30 on Sunday evening. Also, don't forget about the in-home Bible studies, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays if we want them. Amen. Amen. If, I'm sorry. If you want them. Amen. Be praying about that. It'll be a good time. It will be. So brother, if you would come, we're going to receive the Sunday evening tithing offering. And remember, all Christians pay tithes and give offerings unto the Lord. Brother, will you please pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time to share for you to give back to you. We ask you to help us bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Amen. Amen.
giving tonight. The Lord will bless you. And at this time, the sisters and the brother Alleluia. are going to be singing a special. And after that, pastor is going to come and minister the word of God. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Hallelujah. How great is our God tonight? Y'all know how great he is. Get on in and sing with us. Hallelujah. Here we go. Uh, the splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice uh, he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great ah how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god hallelujah how great how great Praise Lord, isn't he great this night? Thank you, Jesus. Our God is a great God. Amen? Man, you may be seated tonight. Back here tonight for a triple portion. Amen. 
excited to see what the Lord is doing in the lives of individuals. Amen. As I was, as we were singing these songs tonight, I was looking around at the children, children here, and I, I thought about when I was a kid. How I was in church service, and you know, how my mom had me sleeping on the pew. You know, you fall asleep. You know, you, you know, you, you, you come to church as a kid, you're looking at the preacher and the singing and all stuff. You're looking, but all of a sudden, uh, before you know it, somebody's, hey, let's go, we leaving. <laughs> Waking up on that, we ain't had no um, uh, no padded pews. We had those wooden pews. Slob all on the side of my face. <laughs> but yeah, just you know, I, I thought about that and I said, you know something, um, children don't forget. They may be sleeping in church and whatever, but you know something? They don't forget. They don't forget. I remember the time I remember that time when I was sleeping in church, but you know something? Uh, something must have got in. Something must have got in. But some of them sort of living on messages while you sleep and the preacher preaching and preaching and then, and you know, I never knew that I was gonna become a preacher myself. But praise God. The Lord knows. So, you know, when you bring your children to church, don't think that ah, it's not working. It works. The gospel, the gospel message still works. Amen. Don't forget the service times as the brother was sharing on um, Tuesday Bible study, uh, 6.30, uh, 6.30, Thursday evening, uh, Saturday prayer meeting. You know, someone came to me um, right after church and said, Pastor, what can I do? I want to do something. I said, well, praise God. Amen. You know, you don't get too many people to come up and say, Pastor, what can I do? I, I'm doing anything, Pastor. Huh? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Pastor, don't, don't count on me saying, I'm broken. Can I die? <laughs> but praise God, it's good to see. It's good to know that there are folks that's standing um, in the wings ready, ready to go. There's folks here, same way. Standing in the wings, ready to do whatever the work of God needs. Amen? As the brother said, what is, what is church without people? There is no church without people. It's just pews, chairs, just sitting there. With no people in them. But I'm thankful for each one of you that are here tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to be reading one verse of scripture out of the book of Psalms tonight. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I like to take that one verse of scripture, preach on a thought. Be still. Be still. Brother Josh Riedel, could you please pray? Lord, Heavenly Father, we stand before you in your presence, in your house. God, we just ask that now, wherever we're living at, God, you would help us to deal with these things through your word tonight. God, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And God, we know as your word comes forth, you will show us what direction you want us to go, how you want us to conduct our life. And God, we just ask that these things that we mentioned tonight, that you would bless your word and move in a mighty and miraculous way. Deliver men and women from sin. God, we ask that you would touch pastor and make preaching easy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to share tonight before I start. The gospel message, it changes the inside. Yes, sir. That's right. Hello? Yes, sir. The inside. It starts on the inside. We sing that song, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. I just want to throw that out there. Um, the gospel message is, it starts from the inside. The Lord changes the way that we think. Hello? Yes, sir. Amen. He works with our character. What? A, what who, who are we? What he looks at our character. We, Our character is that we are what we are when no one's looking around. That's, when our, that's what our character is. Hello? We're not, our character is not when people are watching, hey, praise God, hey! But our character is when everyone is gone. And you're standing there. And no one else is watching. That's your true character. We live in an uptight generation. There are 10 times more things going on in a day than anyone can do. And so we feel we are always behind in failing to do all that we can or could. All we do is respond, respond, 
respond. We want peace, but it just does not fit into our agenda because we always are busy. Peace calls for doing nothing and sometimes we can't handle just doing nothing. Did you know that? One man wrote, most of man's troubles come from his inability to just be still. Always got to be doing something. I, I, I got to be doing something. In our text tonight, God is telling us to just be still. Be still and know that I am God. So, well, preacher, what does that mean? I don't have to do nothing. I don't have to do anything. No, I'm not saying that. But you will find out what being still before the Lord is before you leave it tonight. Amen. It still means to cease from striving. Striving means doing it in our own effort. We're not working our way to heaven. Hello? We, it's, not, it's nothing that we can do to uh, um, attain what Jesus has already done on the cross. It's not. It's no fifty million old ladies helping across the street. It's not. Even Paul said that I could uh, get my body to be burned, but I have not love. You have love. Be still means to cease from striving. Striving means doing it in our own effort. You might say, "Well, preacher, I'm not striving with God. I love Him and I'm faithful to Him." Well, sometimes we struggle with God in so many ways we don't even think about. Put down here. When God tells us what to do, sometimes we ignore it. When God tells us how to do something, we want to do it our own way or modified in such a way. Lord, I do this, but I'm going to do it like this. You got to think about, when, you know, if you modify what the Lord tells us to do. Think about if, if Noah would have modified the ark. But I'm not going to cut that gopher wood uh, one and a half inches. I'm just going to cut it one and a quarter inch. We modify the, what the Lord says. When God tells us how to do something, we want to do it or modify it. When sin knocks on the door in our hearts, and we begin to answer it and invite it in. When we try to change others in our own power, in our own image. Hello. God has called me to do what he's called me to do. He has not called me to be like someone else. Hello? Why are you saying that, preacher? Because God has called me to be what he wants me to be. Yes, you can glean from individuals. You can glean things from individuals, but you know something? God does not have any clones. He doesn't have anyone doing the same thing someone else is doing. Because if that's the case, he might as well just have one person just doing one thing. We have to take the back seat. We have to remember that God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Sometimes individuals put too much confidence in false security. We feel safe in our homes. But you know something? Your home can be broken into. I remember when I was a kid, our house was the only house in the, on the neighborhood that wasn't broken into. And then my brother had to go and invite one of his friends to the house. All of a sudden, somebody broke into it. All people got to know is, what's in there? And all of a sudden, ka-ching! Window broke. Trying to get in the back door. And somebody was trying to get in our back door. And our neighbor, our neighbor came out the house with a shotgun. She said, get away from that door. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> we feel safe in our homes, but they can be broken into. We feel our money is safe. There is no adequate protection against our finances. Hello. Sometimes we feel that our job is secure. Even the best employees are let go. We're thinking in our mind, oh yeah, my job is secure. God's going to protect them. You don't know what God has in your life. Things can happen wherever you take a turn. Oh, it doesn't matter how good of an employee you are. God can change that thing up and say, okay, I'm going to um, touch his life with his job. Don't be saying that, preacher. 
I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. You can say all oh, in the name of Jesus all you want to, but if God touches it, <laughs> we still we feel safe with our family and friends, but even they can't keep us safe. Our only hope for true security in this life is Almighty God, putting our trust in Him. And saying that, I mean true security is found in applying the word of God to our lives. That's what separates the men from the boys. Applying the word of God to your life. Not just preaching it. Not just talking it. Not just reading it. Not just texting it. Not just saying, God is good. If you ain't applying it to your life, you're just a fake. I do not receive that in the name of Jesus. See it all you want. His word gives us wisdom. His word gives us hope. His word gives us security. His word protects and gives us wisdom with the finances he blesses each one of us with. By his word, it secures our trust in him and not a job. And not a family or friends. His word secures each one of us to him. If Jesus is in your life, he will take care of you. That's what the Bible says. It's two things that you never for, never know. The righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. God will take care of his. In Psalm chapter 91, verse 1 through 5, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide over the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Excuse me. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Notice, he said here, he's a place of protection. He's our refuge. He's a source of our trust. In him will I trust. He's our source of deliverance. Surely he shall deliver thee. Hello? It's quiet out here. God is a God of deliverance. Hello? Yes. Regardless of what goes on in our life, he delivers. He delivers. When we cry out to him, he hears our prayers. Hello? Amen. He's not a God whose ears are not are stopped against his people cries. But when we cry out to him, Lord, help me. Hello? Remember blind by the mess? Jesus, have mercy upon me. Y'all must not have read the Bible. <laughs> have mercy on me. And the Bible says that G. Oh, well, no, no. Before that, he said, have mercy on me. And somebody in the crowd, supposed to be following Jesus. Shut up. Yes. Yes. Be quiet. But brother man, did he be quiet? No, he said. The Bible says he cried out even the more. No, son of David. I don't care what they say. Have mercy on me. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus walking, he stood still. He stopped in his tracks. Why? Because he heard a cry of faith. He heard a cry of, of, of someone crying out to him that had a need. And as he stood still there, the Bible says that he, that he, he probably got the people that told him to shut up. Hey, bring that man over here. Bartimaeus came over there and Jesus, he didn't skip a beat. He said, what can I do for you? He didn't skip a beat either. He said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Right. He didn't go down there and say, Lord, I've been sitting here all day long. Could you give me a few bits? Can you give me a few dollars, Lord? No. He went to the big, the big leagues. God, I want to receive my sight. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, that's what you got to do with God. Yes, sir. God, God begins to deal with our hearts and we, we may come with, with some pence or whatever, Lord, or whatever you got, God. No, God wants to say, hey, what do you have need of? Yes, sir. What do you have need? Tell me. 
I want to know. I want the world to see of a true that I can do this for you. That I can do it for you. And if we don't, if we don't shut up and begin uh, uh, to say, well, you know, whatever God has, just give me the crumbs from the table. No, Jesus don't want us to just have the crumbs from the table. He wants us to pull up to the table. He wants us not only to pull up to the table, but to feast on his blessings, on his mercy, on his grace. He wants us to feast upon all the blessings that he has on those tables. Yes. Amen. He also is our provider. Missionary Hudson Taylor, a missionary to China had complete trust in God's faithfulness. In his journal, one of his journals, he wrote, our Heavenly Father is a very experienced one. He knows his children wake up with a good appetite every morning. He sustained three million Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. We don't expect he will send three million missionaries to China. But if he did, he would have sufficient means to sustain all of them. Yes, sir. That's right. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Because you can depend upon him. Yes, sir. Amen. You may not can depend upon the church. Hello? Yeah. You may not can depend, I'm going to say it now, on Pastor Walls or Sister Walls. But you can depend on Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember that a long time ago, our pastor we begin to call him and, and I want to ask him questions. Or, Lord, oh, Pastor, what do you think about this? Pastor, what do you think about this? The first thing you always ask, did you pray, brother? Did you pray? There's silence on the phone. Hello, is anybody there? Brother, did you pray? You don't say nothing. He just, you start holding the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that was the answer I didn't pray sometimes people want the answer from the pastor from the church did you pray silence on the phone did you pray <laughs> so why are you saying pray because the Lord this is true now the Lord is helping your relationship with him. He's facilitating your relationship with him. God shows me. He begins to help me with our relationship with each other. Sister Walls. Sister Walls have a different relationship with God than I have. And she can't rely, so to speak, on my relationship with God. Yes, I do my part. As far as my wife is concerned, as far as the church is concerned, Sister Walls does her part as far as being a, a wife to her husband as far as the church is concerned. But her relationship with the Lord is separate from mine. Hello? I don't believe that. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Say whatever you want to receive, anything. <laughs> somebody, why just keep on that? Because somebody said that sometime ago. Hey, you know, some things that people, they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear, you know, they, want, they, they think that serving God is like going into a candy store. Oh, I can get all the things I want, praise God, praise God, I'll take this, I'll take that, I'll take this. But when you, be, when you say something about, hey, you need to such and such do this, you need to do that. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus, I just want my blessings. Hello? That's freedom on caution, I ain't even got that down here. God! God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. Hello? I'm going to say it again. God's work in God's way will never lack God's supply. Sometimes it seems like things aren't going correctly, but if we continue, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like on a boat. You, you're on the waves of the sea of life. And if you think that the sea of the, you think the sea of life is just a smooth sail. Laying back with your sunglasses on with the umbrella and the drink. If you think it's a smooth sail, you're on the wrong boat. Because life, sometimes there's storms that come. Arachidon storms. Come through our lives. 
We may be sitting there and all of a sudden a drink, uh, our uh, 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 fruit punch drink in our hand with that uh, umbrella in there starts to shake. The umbrella falls off. What's going on, Lord? We see black clouds in the distance coming toward us. And we begin to say, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that ain't stopping the clouds. Because the Lord knows what we have need of. They need to go through a storm. Because they need to trust me. Hello. I mean, when I was a young Christian, I used to call my father, Lord, oh, Dad, I need that, I need this, Dad, I need that. And one time I called my dad, my dad said, don't be calling me for no money, boy. So who I'm going to call? Ghostbusters. No. I, saw, I thought, thought about that when I said that. Who are you going to call? I can't call my father. I can't call my mom. I can't call my grandparents. My friends are beginning to, to push me to the side. Who am I going to lean upon? Jesus. Jesus. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to cultivate a relationship with all of us. I'm reminded Reverend Love came. He's like, come on, let's come around the, the faith zone. Come on, come on, come on. And everybody was excited. Ah! But now Pastor Walls is pastoring. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> this is real life right here. <laughs> we are too caught up in our self-sufficiency. Oh, we have, I put down here, all we have comes from God. He provides for us. When we rely more on ourselves, it creates worry. So quiet are you. God provides. He provides serenity. In Psalms chapter 23 and verse 2, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He provides his supply to each one of us. In Psalms chapter 36 and verse 8. It says, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. That thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. He gives each one of us an abundant future. Okay. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 1, verses 1 through 3, he says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. Don't get tired of serving the Lord. Because when you, even when you get to heaven, you still be serving him. Always be a servant. Ain't no, I ain't, preacher, ain't no servant. I want people to serve me. You're in the wrong mindset. I want my husband, I want my wife to serve me. Don't say it. Because... We should serve one another. Yes, that's right. Hello? Amen. Amen. I found out in life that you got to serve others. If you're married, it starts with your spouse. Hmm, preacher, come on. This ain't no relationship class. Keep on going forward. <laughs> I don't want to hear all that serving stuff. I serve my wife and she serves me. We serve each other. It's mutual. She serves the Lord. She yields her heart to God, her life. I serve the Lord. I yield my heart and my life to him. And we serve each other. If I have a problem, I'm going to say it now. If I have a problem serving someone else, especially my wife, I got a problem. And if my wife, vice versa, if she has a problem of serving her husband, she has a problem. I don't receive that in the name of <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that. Because Jesus, Jesus served people. And he's still serving people. He's our powerhouse, I'll put down here. A little boy was trying to pick up a rock. He said, Dad, it's too heavy. 
And the dad said, son, you can do it. The boy strained and tried again. He said, dad, this rock is too heavy. And the father and sister, son, you can do it. He tried again. Dad, I'm telling you, it's too heavy. The father said, son, you're not using all your strength. He said, dad, I am, I am. It's too heavy. Son, you're not using all your strength. He said, Dad, why are you always saying I'm not using all my strength? It's still too heavy. The father replied, I know you're not using all your strength because you have not asked me for help yet. Hello. There is more strength available to each one of us than what you have. Ask him to strengthen you. Ask him to help you. Don't try to do it in your own ability. And Psalms 46 and verse 10 says, be still. That's what we're concentrating on. And know, when you be still, you're going to know. This is literally translated, be still, to sink. Okay, I'm going to tell you now. To be slothful. Relax. Sink down. Or hang down limp. Be feeble. Be in a state of lacking power or force with a focus that the muscles have lost their muscle tone to flex and to respond to a situation. In other words, there is nothing in you that can accomplish this. It's all God. When we're, be, when we're being still before the Lord, we're like this. In our inward man or woman. We're limp. Okay, I'm going to go somewhere next with that. The only lasting and real peace is the peace done God's way. Every fear is stilled. Every anxiety quieted. His people can relax. Because he's God. And he is victorious. Okay. He is supreme. I put down there. He is supreme among the nations. Supreme over all the earth. These are the conditions that real peace comes from God. A mind focus on allegiance to him. To him. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Perfect peace. You want peace? Have your mind stayed on Jesus. How can I do that all day long? You crazy? I mean, I got to look at these men that's coming around me. <laughs> I got I to look at these this women that's walking past. Man, preacher, I can't believe you're saying that. Where's your mind stayed at? Also, a heart that's christ centered John chapter 14 and verse 27 peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid when we're worshiping the Lord on the inside when we're being still before God are we like this or are we like this? Are we yielded? Are we limp? Is the spiritual man inside? Or, put down there, are you being still before the Lord? Is your spirit relaxed? Is it slothful and sunk down in the presence of your creator? Is it slack or slothful? In other words, have you let go of your inner man or woman and allowed the Lord to take over? Or is it, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to see, I just can't, I, I can't cry out to God, I can't pray, I can't, I don't want people, I don't want to be slack. You know, when you get, when I get up here and preach, I have to be slack. I have to be and my spirit kind of slothful. Because if I'm, if I'm like uh, uh, tense, I won't say what the Lord wants me to say. 
Because you have to listen to the Spirit of God. You have to listen to what the Lord is tr trying to tell you. We can't be worried about who's looking. That's why so, so many times, that's why sometimes people don't even want to come to church. Because they're too proud to go limp. And I ain't talking about, ah, ah, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just limp, being still before the Lord. And allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us. To lead us, to guide us, to order our steps. To listen to that still, small voice. To go in the right direction. Sometimes you can praise God. Lifting up holy hands unto the Lord without wrath or doubting. Sometimes you can shout, oh God. Sometimes there's a time where you just be still. You're real quiet. You can't, no one can hear you. Just, just God and you speaking. But you know something? That's not all the time. That's not all the time. Well, I'm just a quiet individual. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> that's not all the time. Now, you want to know a quiet individual. I'm a quiet individual. I'm a quiet guy. And I, I couldn't even close my eyes in front of a crowd because <laughs> I felt uncomfortable. I couldn't close my eyes and lift up my hands and praise God because I had too much pride in my life. Really? That was a true story. Because I was ashamed to praise him in public. I was ashamed to lift up my voice because I was uh, afraid of what people thought about me. Really, I'm telling you. It's all going to come out in the end. It's all gonna come out. And God, he gives me, you know, the Spirit of God gives you things to share, you know, so people can say, hey, you know, there is a freedom in the Holy Ghost. There is a freedom that you don't have to be ashamed to lift up holy hands. There is, there is a freedom, a liberty. That's what the Bible says. This, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's liberty to lift up holy hands. There's liberty to cry out to him. We don't have to begin to uh, uh, put our heads down and begin to be ashamed and, be, and, and afraid. And God ain't giving us the spirit of feet. But he gives us a, a sound mind. Uh, he, gives, he gives us love, peace, and a sound mind. Yes. Amen. We can cry out to him. He desires them to worship. He desires his people to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hello? I, I know you don't believe that there's quietness in heaven all the time. How can it be quiet in heaven when you got an awesome God that's, that's on the throne? The Bible says that the, the, the uh, creatures in heaven, they worship the Lord day and night. Holy, holy, holy. It's a lamb of God. Holy, holy. They worship him all the time. It ain't quiet in heaven. Even the, even the, uh, I believe that, I'm telling you, I believe everything that, that has breath. That's what the Bible says. Let them worship the Lord. Let them praise God. I believe everything, if the grass or the trees is up there, I believe the trees and the grass are worshiping God. The rocks are crying out. Uh, they're in heaven. Uh, holy, holy, holy. It's a lamb of God. Uh, everything uh, that has breath. Uh, if God created it, they're going to worship him. That's there. The only creature that doesn't worship God the way they should is mankind. Why don't you close it down, preacher? I want to hear all this. Hey, you ain't got to hear all this. But you always come back to the truth. Because where the truth is, it'll make you free. That's what Jesus does. He makes us free <laughs> from our own self. Amen. You know, look in the mirror and sometimes I say, man, God, help me. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me, God, to go in the direction you want me to go. Listen, Lord, I know people want to help and I know people want to encourage but God, help me to follow you. Help me to follow you. That I may be right in your eyes. That when I stand before you on that last day, that I'll be correct in your eyes. 
Help me to be like that, God. Be still and know that I'm God, that he says. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. The Bible says he will lift you up. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to the Lord tonight. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Tonight, don't be uptight. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. You are in the Father's house. There is liberty in the Father's house. There is peace in the Father's house. There is love in the Father's house. There is contentment in the Father's house. Everything you desire in your soul is here in the Father's house. Hallelujah. All he wants you to know is to be still. Don't be uptight. Don't hold back. Just allow the spirit of almighty God to reign freely in your heart and your life. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and your concern for your people tonight. Lord, I know I have not been lengthy tonight, but God, I've shared your oracles of truth tonight. I was not afraid, and I ask God that you would take what has been shared tonight and lodge it in the heart and the lives of your people. The souls, Lord, that you have created. Help them, God, to look to you tonight, who is the author and the finisher of their faith. Help them, Lord, to know of a true that you are the answer. You're the answer tonight. The altars are open tonight. Come. Come as Reverend Love say around the faith zone and allow the Lord to touch your very soul tonight. Come. Come on. Come on. There's some that's coming now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Help all those, Lord, that come tonight. Only you can help them, God. Only you can deliver them, Lord. Only you, Lord, God can sanctify as we magnify and glorify your holy name tonight. Thank you, Jesus, as we look to you tonight, as we pray, God, the Lord going to live before your spirit and give us the liberty that comes from you tonight, Holy Ghost. If all is what Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, then let's remember Calvary and be willing to say I thought that no one saw, but if you ask of me to give the very thing I love the best, then give me the courage and the strength and make me willing to say yes. I will give you all. I will give you all.
Let's remember Calvary and be willing to say yes. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is of what you ask, dear Lord, then I Continue to worship him tonight. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Cry out to him tonight. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight, God, for your people. God, for the souls that you've led here tonight, God. Lord, I ask you tonight as your servant and as your disciple that you would answer every petition, every prayer that they utter to you tonight. Let them know the truth tonight, God, that you're still the true and living God, that there is none other than you, Lord. The God that you still answer prayer. Lord, I will give you all tonight. If all is what you ask, dear Lord, I won't withhold. Lord, help me to be still in your presence. If my sacrifice is less, God, than giving you my very best, Lord, let me remember Calvary because you gave your all there, God. You sacrificed and gave your life. You shed your blood on Calvary's cross. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask, dear Lord. And I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best. Let's remember Calvary. And be willing to say yes. Thank you, Lamb of God, for what you've done on Calvary's hill. Hallelujah. God, for your many blessings upon all of our lives. Lord, as we continue this week, this week, God, continue to yield ourselves before you. Lord, as we wake up in the morning, God, let us know, God, let us begin to uh, uh, say in our minds that the Lord has woken us up this morning you've given us another opportunity Lord in this world God to be a servant to someone else help us Lord to be more like you daily I ask in Jesus name brother Joshua Reed could you close in prayer tonight Let each one say amen. 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 And reminded, uh, Bible study Tuesday evening, 630. Pray for one another. Go with the Lord.